Good day everyone! I am James Denver Sarmiento from Comtinho National High School and I am your Teletroan teacher for today. Today we will be discussing the different ways of how representative animals produce and differentiate a sexual reproduction from sexual reproduction. Let us start with the question, how do different animals ensure continuity of species? But before we answer that question, let us read our lesson objective first. Describe the different ways of how representative animals reproduce. Second one is to identify the different ways how animals reproduce. And third one, differentiate a sexual reproduction from sexual reproduction. Reproduction is the biological process by which new individual organisms, offspring, are produced from their parents. There are two types of reproduction exist in living organisms. First is a sexual and sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction is common among lower form of animals while a sexual reproduction can be found in more complex animals. Let us go deeper describing a sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction, this type of reproduction, does not need two parents to reproduce an individual. Therefore, the offspring produced is exactly copy of the parent animal. Most common form are fission, fragmentation, and budding. What is fission? When we say fission, it's a type of a sexual reproduction wherein splitting of cell into two or more cells, each small cell cells is known as daughter cells. Coral polyps reproduce asexually by fission where an organism is split into two separate organisms. Another form of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Fragmentation, the breaking of body parts into fragments, is always followed by regeneration and regrowth of lost parts. Even if the animal is broken into many pieces, each piece will grow into new individual. Planaria, as shown in the illustration, is an example of fragmentation. As well as sponges, cetarians, bristle worms, and sea skirts reproduce by fragmentation. Another form of asexual reproduction is budding. What is budding? When we say budding, it is when an outgrowth called a bud grows and develops from the parent animals and would eventually separate to become a new individual. This type of reproduction is common in certain species of corals and hydra. There you have it for asexual reproduction. Let us proceed to sexual reproduction. What is sexual reproduction? When we say sexual reproduction needs two parents to produce an offspring, the combination of the genes from both parents increase the chances of species variation. Therefore, the species extinction is highly unlikely. Fertilization, the union of egg and sperm cells, could happen internally or externally. Next is, what is external fertilization? In external fertilization, the union of egg and sperm occur outside female reproductive tract. This is common among most species of bony fish and amphibians. As shown in the illustration, the clasping of male frog includes the female to release eggs over which the male release his sperm cell. Another thing, most eggs of the amphibians develop in water but either carry them on their back or in their vocal sac as shown in the illustrations. Let us proceed to internal fertilization. Internal fertilization, the union of egg and sperm, occur within the female reproductive tract. Animals that undergo in this reproduction produce offspring in any of the following ways. Oviparity, ovo baby parity, and baby parity. But what is oviparity? Oviparity. After the eggs are fertilized internally, it would complete its development outside the mother's body. The egg would receive its nourishment through its yolk. This found in some bony cartilaginous fish include clownfish and glutans, moss reptiles, amphibians, all birds, and few mammals. Another way of internal fertilization is ovo-bibiparity. 
Although by viviparity, the eggs are also fertilized internally and receive its nourishment through its yolk. However, eggs will complete its development within the mother. They are fully developed when they are hatched and released by the mother. This is common in some bony fish including the mollies, the guppies, and mosquito fish, some cartilaginous species, and many reptiles. Lastly is viviparity. When we say viviparity, the eggs are developed internally and receive nourishment directly from the mother's blood through placenta rather than from the yolk. This can be found in most cartilaginous species including the lemon shark, most amphibian, a few reptiles, and most all the mammal including humans. Those are the different ways on how animals reproduce. I hope that you learned something today, but before we end this session, feel free to post this video and answer the following question. First is, what do you think? Earthworm or hermaphrodite contains both egg and sperm. When mating, the two worms are lined up against each other with each head facing in opposite direction. A sperm are only pass from each other which then fertilize each other eggs, then cocoon forms in each worm. Let's try this. Tell whether the following scenarios are under asexual and sexual reproduction and state the advantage and disadvantage of, of having these qualities. Number one is offspring are genetically variable. Number two, every offspring is genetically identical. Number three, slower rate of reproduction number four faster rate of reproduction number five needs only one parent to reproduce an offspring number six needs two parents to produce an offspring and number seven extinction of species is unlikely let us explore jellyfish reproduce involves both sexual and asexual reproduction Sexual reproduction occurs in adult stage where male release sperm and female release eggs. When sperm and egg combine, it will form a small larva called plunula. These plunulae will attach thorax and become polyps. During this stage, they can reproduce asexually by elongating the batting up to produce many young jellyfish. The question is, why do you think many species of jellyfish produce offspring extraordinarily quickly? That's all for today. Thank you for active participation. I hope you learned something a lot. This has been James Denver Sarmiento from Campino National High School. See you again and goodbye.